Jackie Hensley and me and my dog here, Daisy, are very excited to share with you one of my favorite Dr. Seuss stories from when I was little. And I actually still have the same copy called On Beyond Zebra. It is one of his longer stories, so find a comfortable spot and settle in. And I hope you enjoy it. On Beyond Zebra by Dr. Seuss. To Helen. On Beyond a Zebra. Psych Conrad Cornelius O'Donnell O'Dell, my very young friend who's learning to spell. The A is for ape and the B is for bear. The C is for camel. The H is for hare. The M is for mouse and the R is for rat. I know all the 26 letters like that. Through to Z is for zebra. I know them all well said Conrad Cornelius O'Donnell O'Dell. So now I know everything anyone knows from beginning to end, from the start to the close, because Z is as far as the alphabet goes. Then he almost fell flat on his face on the floor when I picked up the chalk and drew one letter more, a letter he never had dreamed of before. And I said, you can stop if you want with the Z because most people stop with the Z, but not me. In the places I go, there are things that I see that I never could spell if I stopped with the Z. I'm telling you this because you're one of my friends. My alphabet starts where your alphabet ends. My alphabet starts with this letter called Yuz. It's the letter I use to spell Yuzamataz. You'll sort of be surprised what there is to be found once you go beyond Z and start poking around. So on Beyond Zebra, explore like Columbus, discover new letters, like Wum is for Wombus, my high spouting whale who lives high on a hill and who never comes down till it's time to refill. So on Beyond Z, it's high time you were shown that you really don't know all there is to be known. Then just a step Further past Wum is for Wumbus, and there you'll find Um, and the Um is for Umbus, a sort of a cow with one head and one tail, but to milk this great cow, you need more than one pail. She has 98 faucets that give milk quite nicely, perhaps 99, I forget just precisely, and boy, she is something most people don't see, because most people stop at the Z, but not me. I ramble, I scramble, through swamp and through swamp, where the letters get better, like letters like hump. There's a real handy letter. What's handy about it? You just can't spell hump, hump, a dumper without it. But if you stay home with zebra, you're stuck in a rut. But on beyond zebra, you're anything but. Why, I know a fine, fancy letter called fuddle. I use it in spelling Miss Fuddle Dee Duddle. And oh, what a bird of a bird of a bird of. Her tail is the longest that's ever been heard of. So long and so fancy, she'd be in a fix if she didn't have helpers. It takes about six to tag along, hoisting Miss Fuddle Dee Duddle's wonderful tail out of Muddle Dee Puddles. And Glick is for Glicker, who lives in wild weeds and spends his time juggling fresh cinnamon seeds which he's usually able to find in great number, excepting, of course, in the month of September, when cinnamon seeds aren't around in great number. So that month he juggled with seeds of cucumber. And na is the letter I use to spell nudges, who live in small caves known as niches for hutches. These nudges have troubles, the biggest of which is the fact there are many more notches than niches. Each notch in a niche knows that some other notch would like to move into his niche very much. So each notch in a niche has to watch that small niche or notches who haven't got niches will snitch. Then we go on to snee and the snee is for sneedle, a terrible kind of ferocious mosquito whose humdinger stinger is sharp as a needle. The needle's too tough to be killed with a smack, so he has to be hunted on elephant back. 
and your eyes and the elephants have to be keen and you have to aim fast and you have to hit clean and the bullet you shoot is a stale navy bean that you've dunked for three weeks in old sour kerosene, which is awfully hard work. So it's easy to see why most people stop at the Z, but not me. When you go beyond zebra, who knows? There's no telling what wonderful things you might find yourself spelling. Like Quan is for Quandary, who lives on a shelf in a hole in the ocean alone by himself. And he worries each day from the dawn's early light. And he worries, just worries, far into the night. He just stands there and worries. He simply can't stop. Is his top side his bottom? or bottom side top. And Thnad is for Thnatters. And oh, are they sad, oh. The big one you see has the smaller one's shadow. The shadow the small Thnadner has should be his. I don't understand it, but that's how it is. A terrible mix up in shadows. Gee whiz. And Spaz is a letter. I use to spell spasm, a beast who belongs to the nasm of basm. Handy for traveling, that's why he has them. More easy to pack than a suitcase or grip. These, those horns carry all that he needs on a trip. A thread and a needle for mending his socks, his toothbrush, a cup, and two three-handed clocks, and his velvet umbrella, his vegetable chopper, and also his gold-plated popping corn popper and a grasshopper cage for his favorite grasshopper. And Flob is for Flob Bobber Bab Bobber Bubs, who bounce in the water like blubbery tubs. They're no good to eat. You can't cook them like steaks, but they are handy in crossing small oceans and lakes. And Zats is the letter I use to spell Zats it, whose nose is so high that most nobody pats it. And patting this lonely old nose is the least that a fellow could do for this fine, friendly beast. So, to get there and do it, I built a, an invention. The three-seater Zatsit nose padding extension. If you try one, try to drive one, you'll certainly see why most people stop at the Z. But not me. And jog is my letter for spelling jogoons who doodle around in the far desert dunes, just doodle around, crooning very sad tunes about peppermint, peanuts, and pebbles and prunes, and paint pots and polka dots, pinheads and pigs, and their grandmother's, grandfather's, stepsister's wigs. So you see, there's no end to the things you might know, depending how far beyond a zebra you go. I have a letter called Flun, and the Flun is for Flunnel, a softish, nice fellow who hides in a tunnel. He only comes out of his hole, I'm afraid, when the right kind of softish, nice music is played on a kind of hunting horn called the Ogrunth. And to learn to, how to play it takes month after month of pra practicing. Practicing isn't much fun. And besides, it's quite heavy, weighs almost a ton. That's why few people bother to play the O'Grunt. So the flannel's been out of his tunnel just once. And way, way past Z is a letter called Itch. And the Itch is for Itchipods, animals which race around back and forth, forth and back, through the air, on a very high sidewalk between here and there. They're afraid to stay there. They're afraid to stay here. They think there is too far. They think here is too near, and since here is too near and there is too far, they're too scared to roost wheresoever they are. There's a letter called Yek, and the Yek is for Yekko, who howls in an underground grotto in Gecko. These Yekkos love echoes, and this is their motto. For best Yekko echoes, try Gecko, our grotto. Oh, the things you can find if you don't stay behind. On a world near the sun live two brothers called Rooms, who, strangely enough, are built sort of like brooms. And they're stuck all alone, up there high in the blue, 
And so, to kill time, just for something to do, each one of these fellows takes turns with the other in sweeping the dust off his world with his brother. And hi is my letter for hi gargorum. For getting me places real fast, I'm all for them. They puffle along and their brakes never squeak. And they run every hour, every day of the week, from the town of North Nub to the town of East Ounce, making stops at West Bunglefield, Yupster, and Jounce, and at Ipswich and Nipswich, and also South Bounce, and another small town that's too hard to pronounce. The places I took him, I tried hard to tell young Conrad Cornelius O'Donnell O'Dell a few brand new, wonderful words he might spell. I led him around, and I tried hard to show there are things beyond Z that most people don't know. I took him past Zebra as far as I could, and I think perhaps maybe I did him some good. Because finally he said, this is really great stuff, and I guess the old alphabet isn't enough. Now, the letters he uses are something to see. Most people still stop at the Z, but not he. They give a list of letters for people who don't stop at Z. And what do you think we should call this one anyhow? The end. I do hope you enjoyed this story. I would love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching.